Hey everyone, this is Yoji from the Brand Exchange Podcast. Welcome everyone for episode five with Geoff Mabasa this time. He is a ex user operations at ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok. He's ex marketing manager of Grab and the ex marketing head at Union Bank or UBX and currently currently doing the marketing and partnership role at Binance. So thank you for being the first uh, Web3 crypto guest on our show. Geoff, welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Yoji. Nice to see you again. Yeah, and welcome back to Asia, even though you're leaving again soon. How was your trip with Binance throughout Europe? My trip was life-changing, to say the least. I can't wait to be back. Okay. What did you, which country did you go to? Well, I went to a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of countries, but uh, I think my favorite would be Spain. I enjoyed okay. Barcelona the most. It's very laid just back, the... chill. The weather's yeah. just nice, you know. Okay, okay, yeah. Barcelona is great. I love Spain as well. Before we talk about branding, marketing, Binance, etc., I just want to kick things off for the youngsters on the podcast and just ask you, you're one of your first major roles at ByteDance, right? So TikTok, how did you get to that role? I think, was it was the role in China? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I actually was based in China for a couple of months. And okay. Well, I, I was headhunted. Luckily, I was at the time I was on the market for a role. Since I think that time a startup that I used to work for got dissolved, they ran out of money. And given my background, I went to music school. My interest really lies into the entertainment space, entertainment okay. and space. Basically. And TikTok looked like a really nice match for me at the time. TikTok wasn't as huge as it is right now in the Philippines. <laughs> but um, yeah, it turned out to be a very good match. During that time, it was uh, the merger and acquisition period of Musical.ly and TikTok as well. Okay. So headhunted straight into TikTok. Okay, so you you register yourself at a Philippine like headhunting site or job site and then someone headhunted you to go to China? Was it like that? Uh, no, uh, my previous boss actually referred me to the headhunter since we all lost the jobs, you know. So this headhunter tried to find a good fit for my profile. And TikTok was one of the companies that were hiring at the time. So I was referred there. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So guys, keep good relationships to all your supervisors to get referred to your next job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Big, big thumbs up from Jofi. All right. So you're obviously more on the marketing side and I had last time also the branding versus marketing wars when Krista was on the show. I love doing that. But before we do, before we go into that discussion, it was in digital marketing, which you have been for a decade now or so. What excites you? Why, why are you into digital marketing? Well, I love that it's very dynamic. It's a function that requires both sides of your brain functioning. It requires me to be very creative. <laughs> by thinking of new ways to talk to my audience. And it also requires me to very to be very critical by looking at and crunching the right numbers to make sure the effort is, I guess, well worth it for the business. Okay, yeah. Um, dynamic ways to improve and find new common ways to communicate with your customers. That's a very great answer. It was almost te textbook. All right, so let's do the bigger questions, branding and marketing. Joff, in your opinion, okay, and you you work with many brands, you work with many designers and then brand strategists and also a lot of marketers. What is the difference between branding and marketing for you? Please enlighten our audience. Sure, sure. Hmm. If I were to describe it in a very easy to consume way so that people would understand, I think branding for me is assigning attributes to something that can enhance the perception of its users positively. It's an activity that brings a company or a brand to life. Branding is that action. It makes it relatable and palatable to, to people, to most people. While marketing can closely be related, I agree that it's still different at some point. Marketing is an activity that helps a brand stimulate sales and generate business by tackling different approaches to selling. So mm. basically, try approach A, but the ultimate goal is for you to sell, right? But branding, in a way, is for you to enhance your look to, towards your audience. Ultimately, branding can be a part of marketing. Yes, definitely. I mean, I, I always like to use the term wars because people have funny conversations about it. But I think it's more of a family and like brother, sister, right. uh, good term fights, right? 
so people keep asking me this for seven years now and the best thing i could come up with is that branding is about feeling something and marketing is about doing something what do you think about that that's good that's good actually the simplest yeah. way to go about it <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I feel like I feel like the key the key role of marketing is really to talk to the right people in the right way to let them know what your brand is about. So like the the brand being the foundation, like you have to put time in it to like clear make like position that right. And then that's only like the beginning of the journey, right? But you have to connect to enough people on this planet that actually care about you. And that's like that big marketing role that you are probably much better than I am. So yeah, now I really, really appreciate your opinion on this as well. So why do you prefer to handle the marketing and partnership side of the business? Okay. First, I love partnerships marketing because I, I love establishing and achieving business goals through relationship building. And I okay. do have a lot of way to experiment with this type of role. You know? The approach is different from just doing a Facebook ads or doing Instagram content. It's because it allows me to learn more about potential executions that I can do with a partner. So it's never going to be boring because it's always dynamic, it's always changing, and the businesses are always kind of different, similar but different, you know. So yeah. there's a lot of experience I can do, but at the same time, it all boils down to throwing in your foundations with marketing. You get what I mean? Like when you yeah. have a partner, you study their business, you have to study approaches appropriate for their business. But if you're only marketing for your business, you're only actually learning about your business. You know? True, true, yeah. Yeah, partnerships, not just a marketing opportunity, but also to learn strategies and other things from your partner brand. That's, that's a very good point. So we all ha hate ads, right? What are you saying? What? I love ads, Suji. No, I'm kidding. What? No, like... <laughs> Okay, sorry. We we all hate like ads that try to sell something. That's that's a much better description, right? So we all want to be engaged in a in a very personal or maybe even emotional stage, right? No one likes ads that say like, "Hey, one dollar discount, buy this now, quick, quick, quick," right? So what are like the top ways that you have discovered yourself recently that could replace these? like salesy ads and you know you mentioned already one with the partnerships and, and engagement the others but like what are your like your favorite ways to talk to the people the right way actually you know let me just try to angle the statement a bit i actually don't hate ads Please. i love ads especially if the offer is right for me but <laughs> yeah. one thing that i really hate is ads that are not targeted to what my interests are you get what I mean? Okay, so, definitely. To answer your question, it boils down to how you really know your audience. Because if you know your audience, you know what to offer them, right? So the foundation is that you should, uh, as a marketer, you should be able to identify what your audience, who your audience are, what they want, and how to talk to them. Because if these three doesn't work, then people are most likely going to hate your ads, you know? Right. Yeah. When you joined Binance, did you did, were you already presented with these kind of like basic information of who you're going to talk to, or was that something that you figured out with your team? No, dude, <laughs> you have to figure it out from scratch. You know, especially me, I didn't come from a web three background. You know, so um, yeah. when I joined Binance, I had to study everything from the ground up, and okay. I didn't know how to talk. But I persevered, of course, it's my job. So um, I had to figure out where they went, what they want, what motivates them, what gets them up in the morning. So uh, those are the things that you should start with as a marketer in order for you to be a better communicator. Right. Okay. So yeah, I just I just saw your Instagram story of having that like I think that most followed TikTok star <laughs> yeah, yeah. connecting with people yeah. mentally on the uh, on the Binance platform, it was a very nice engagement. It's uh, funny, right? Is that, yeah, that's the, well, that was definitely funny. I had to laugh. Did it just come out today or what? Yeah, yeah, it did. Just came out today. So we announced the partnership <laughs> by today or the other day. 
and then this content just came out today. Okay, so you in your current role, are you is your is your marketing and partnerships regional, or are you is there like just one global department for that? Okay, uh, if I start discussing about the structure of the organization, you, it's, you're gonna get mind blown. <laughs> it's very complicated. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah, just is, give, uh, give us a simple version. Yeah, yeah, it's it's global. The approach is global. So there's okay. the BD team who brings in all the leads to, to our team. And then our okay. team, we're the ones who actually nurture them and try to create strategies in terms of how to amplify the things that we're going to do with them. So essentially, um, part, partnerships marketing, you have to come up with ways on how we can make the most out of the engagement. Okay, so you get uh, like an uh, entire ocean full of possible potential partners and then you basically pick the ones that you see you have most common or shared values with and then you can use them and like maybe interview them to talk, okay, how can we achieve something better together? Yeah, that's one, right. that's one way to look at it. Okay, very interesting. So I want to move a little bit more into crypto and Web3, like not not the technical part I'm, I'm not trying to get some insider tips from jeff today but like we've seen coinbase and uh, other like big exchanges right which all have like small differences but technically are crypto companies and exchanges trying to appeal to the mass market and working with like top branding agencies paying half a million dollars for a logo etc cetera, etc cetera, right so what impact do you think like the, all these different brands have in the cryptoverse I believe generally it helps the community and for us, you know, for us in Binance, I can, I can speak for myself also. Really, yes, as please. long as we build the community, we're all for it. Crypto is still in its infancy stage and the industry is, it's still a very frontier industry. So builders are always welcome and brand building is just one part of building the ecosystem, you know. Yeah, definitely. I like every time I open one of the one of the exchanges and I see like coins or you know, what do you call them? Like the staking staking coins that like I've never heard about in my life and like ninety percent of them look like straight from the matrix. I feel like the entire crypto ecosystem still communicates things a little bit too technical to to like talk to to, to the masses, right? And that goes along with what you said of this still being in the beginning stages, even though BTC is around for what twenty years, and <laughs> we've we've seen mass adoption for like two three years ago, if I'm not mistaken. What do you think, like Binance, for example, could do to appeal less technical, like just just from from the entire feeling that you get when you visit the website or other things? I'm never gonna get tired of mentioning this, but I think the way to mass adoption, the way to mainstream appeal is education. Education. Not just education, but mm -hmm. creative education. You cannot expect to teach kids college algebra if they haven't gone through elementary maths yet, you know? It's slow burn, okay. but it's worth it. I think mixed with entertainment and lifestyle, where people, people's attention span usually picks up longer. I think people would have better take on crypto if that approach is actually accomplished. The approach of educated, well, what's the word you used earlier? Created education? education yeah. So you look at it this mm. way. We tap the channels of people, of influencers or KOLs or thought leaders that people usually listen to and usually... Where do you find mass audiences? Where do you find the mass market? It's in the entertainment sector, right? So these people, you tap, you tap their networks, you tell them, you, you try to teach them first about crypto, and then they're the ones who cascade the message towards their audience. I think that's a good approach. Because these people have very short attention span. The only way you're going to get them to listen <laughs> is if they listen to someone they trust, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the entry door, but I I think, do you think that's even gonna work for a higher level? I mean, if you like, if you if you go through the door of of uh, influencer or like trusted person marketing that brings them through the door, but where where do you think like is the next step? Like next step from like okay, I guess. I guess the whole BNB, BTC stuff makes sense. I want to learn a little bit more about it. Do you think that's just like 
where everyone is individually learning on YouTube or, you know, whatever? Or do you, do you have another strategy for that? That's one way, Yoji. But, you know, that's why we have Binance Academy in Binance. Personally, I okay. think these channels, uh, we mentioned earlier that crypto companies are building their brands to become more appealing right. to the mass right? So I think one of the channels, uh, that's the gateway. That's the entry point for the mass audience to enter the web three space, the crypto space. But in order for them to, to learn more, these brands, the web three companies should enable themselves to be catalysts or gateway for their learning. That's why we have a tool called Binance Academy. It's a website. Uh, we have this website mm -hmm. where you can actually access information, crypto 101, and then you can learn from there, essentially. YouTube is just one way. There are other yeah. channels because I, when I joined Binance, I didn't really have web three background, but I learned yeah. because there, there's a lot of inf information out there. You just have to have the right discernment on which ones are actually worth consuming. And I think brands like ours, like other crypt big crypto brands should be responsible, should have a moral responsibility to put up the right content for the people, for mm. the masses. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to check out the Binance Academy. I also, I'm also still catching up, even though friends and people keep dragging me into the hole. But no, let's see to buy into the dip after watching some BNB Academy. Are you guys doing only written content or do you guys have also like video courses and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, we do have different formats of content. Yoji, are you invested in anything right now? Yeah, I'm just mixed between some old coins, so ease, BTC, and then just just the popular ones, not taking it too risky. So, uh, Nia, Solana, Co Dot, and uh, yeah, some something around that. Nothing, nothing that no one has ever heard about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this the time now where we get the secret insider trading? Are you going to buy Celsius next week? <laughs> <or again? laughs> no, I love my job. <laughs> okay. Not, not on the podcast. No, no. Just kidding. All right. Before Geoff shares any confidential information and gets fired, in your role with marketing and partnership for Binance, right? Like what's the most challenging task these days that you encounter? Honestly, you know, right now, when the market is obviously down, the fear and fear and distress within the industry hinders a lot of our projects and partners from just pushing it, you know. And that's understandable. Okay. However, it kind of makes the job a bit more complicated as there are more bridges to cross. And unlike that time when the market was really good, the market was really performing well, people yep. whose attention span were really directed towards you right now it's just so hard to make people listen mm. so i think that's the challenge that most companies have right now in the web three space yeah for sure yeah the when everyone is pulling out specifically the ones with who put a lot of money up which actually hurts them definitely will have a hard time convincing them to <laughs> engage more at this time so when we when we were still in the bull market what was then the most challenging part in terms of your role at Binance? Well, managing multiple campaigns at the same time. Because okay. at the digital market, people wanted more, you know? So um, right. it was me managing multiple campaigns simultaneously because people wanted to engage with your brand as much as possible, you know? True. It's a good problem to have, though, you know? People want to listen to you. People just want to engage with you. But yeah, I, I think that's a commonality between all, if not most, uh, most, if not all crypto companies. That's why a lot of crypto companies massively hired during that time as well, because the capacity just went high. I see, I see. Okay. In your current role, are you, are you also responsible for the digital marketing side, anything in outputs where you communicate internally with like design teams or anything, or do you rather don't have so much to do with that? Oh man, we do everything in Binance, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yes, answer your question, yes. Yes. We, 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 asking, we usually please. liaise with uh, the creatives team just to relay what the project might need or, or what this campaign might need. And yeah. Okay. I'm asking because like we work with like seven, eight brands per year and we often get those internal clashes and little fights in the relationship between the marketing and the design department, specifically when the company has a certain size. 
And I wanted to ask you if you maybe found over the years, because you were in so many marketing roles and probably work with hundreds of designers to see, did you find a good way to talk to these people, talk to the teams within and uh, don't let any miscommunications come up? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Believe me, I've had my fair share of conflicts with Kate and <laughs> with those, uh, the design team uh, as a marketer, you know. But I believe SOP is key. Processes, uh, processes are key to a good working relationship with anyone in any organization. If there's one in place and people mutually respect processes, lead times, timelines, then relationships should flow seamlessly. Right. Yeah, I think also brand strategy, right, which is which we always try to make the the business leaders realize is that it does sometimes feel like it doesn't solve any short time problems, which is true. But in the long run, right, if you in the design and the marketing department, you go back to that to the to the core of why are we doing this, and then thinking, okay, the the marketing guys gave me too much copy. I can't fit it into the post or the designers keep doing whatever they want, right? Like all these like typical things that you hear in the corporate environment these days. I think like can all can all be straightened out if everyone, you know, agrees on, on why we are doing this and, and also how we want to communicate things because then everyone knows that we need to keep things short, right? We need to keep things simple, don't add random elements to things like just just keep it simple play it simple and stick to the brand that we all agreed on that we want to communicate right that's kind of like my take on the on the question that i asked you <laughs> yeah um yeah in your current marketing environment right what is your big plan for for, for 2023 for next year mm. Well, I can speak for what I'm working on right now, and I can tell you, <laughs> legally, everything's pretty exciting because of the amazing deals that were closing left and right. I'm sure you've seen it. We have a lot of mainstream deals closed with mainstream partners. This yeah. actually affords us, people, uh, people in the space, the opportunity to work on new projects, discover new perspectives, especially since we're doing a lot of you know entertainment work right now. It's all cool. Yeah, and okay. I think that's going to sustain towards the next bull run. Yeah, I hope. I mean, everyone's prediction is that it's going to be still a year in it. So I hope for you as well that all your partnerships and everything will all keep up. And then you have soon the problem again that you have too many. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, right. it's, not, it's not that the winter season is all that bad. This time, the season, the, the bear market or the winter season, crypto winter is usually time for great companies to build, you know? This is the right. time of retail investors to accumulate. True. Look at it through lens. Yeah, I agree. I always believe that Bitcoin has two sides, right? Enough people out there with big funds who can buy into the dip and uh, hold hodl long enough just to <laughs> get out what they need. I think all other questions I have, uh, we should say for a crypto only podcast because I don't want to make this too technical. So, Joff, going back 10 years at the beginning of your journey, what advice do you wish someone would have given you at the beginning of your career? Don't get me wrong. I love that I really made nice connections from where I am right now as I go into my career. However, yeah. I think a good advice to tell myself as a young youngster would be to balance the networking aspect of life and my interpersonal relationship with myself. Read more books, go on more solo adventures, instead of trying to find spark in new connections all the time. Not saying it's wrong, but okay. you know, there's such a thing as social saturation and that wow. more time also an investment, you know. It's good to spread it amongst different baskets. Wow, I never heard that before. That's very interesting. Yeah. You can you can go to too many community events that thing exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, <laughs> what do you get out of it? You have diminishing marginal returns from attending so many events, right? You can only attend so much and learn the same thing. Right? Okay. And meet the same Okay. Thing. That's, uh, that is very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I 100% I agree with the part that you always need to take care of yourself. You have to 
don't lose yourself i don't know i'm not a bookworm but you know whatever whatever makes you happy and keeps you calm do prefer traveling instead but definitely don't ever use your personal brand and don't get a community burnout like joff here <laughs> That's why I, never, I didn't show up last week. You know, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. Would you would you like to give us any any legally shareable sneak peek for the crypto world, not for Binance, like anything that you would like to share with our community? No, I I mean I I, I just want to share that it's getting more exciting every day. I think people should hold on because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? And like I said, you know, uh, earlier, I mentioned that crypto is still in its inf- infancy stage. This is still a very frontier industry. So I feel like as more people get to understand the capacity of this industry better, I think it's good that we are actually the first movers here. We are actually the first ones to be here. So yeah, yeah. exactly. But Yoji, when are we going to drink the alcohol behind you? <laughs> the alcohol behind me i don't know get that... a grab get a grab and come over right now i don't care <laughs> please just let me know 10 minutes in advance so i'll, I'll get some ice <laughs> okay <laughs> all right joe i will wish you all the best in your future travels please help binance adopt to mass markets uh, very soon i'm hoping for everyone for a very nice bull market And thank you so much for joining us today in the podcast. Hope to see you soon, Yoji.